Okay, welcome back. Uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, intro for the combustion chamber fuel uh, nozzle and manifold assembly. Um, let's see, part one. Let's call it part one. Uh, that's a good way to start. Uh, I'm thinking I could probably wrap this in a couple of videos, hopefully, so we'll see how it goes and progresses. Um, th this, uh, what you see here, is a combustor or a combustion chamber, depending on uh, how you are trained. Uh, different, uh, I think Graham J uh, maybe calls this a combustor. Um, the service manual calls it a combustion chamber. This uh, assembly here is where air and fuel are mixed together and, a, and the fire is contained within and then it heats the air that's mixed. So it mixes, it, it forms a place for combustion, holds the flame and it mixes uh, air in and which is heated and the, all that expands and races out the back through the uh, back of the engine all right so okay well we also have this piece which is really not the combustion chamber and it honestly isn't part of this assembly but I set it here to show you that this would be the combustion chamber inner liner and it surrounds the rotor shaft keeps so the fire is on this side and this flange baffle system here is what directs the gases towards the uh, turbine nozzle and turbine. Tur the turbine nozzle and the turbine itself. And you can, well, the way it's designed you can tell it basically directs the hot gases through and it also allows a dead air space around the outside of the shaft for cooling air. So what we have is cooling air passing through the inside of this from the uh, compressor, compressor diffuser area. And in fact, this piece has a flange right here, which uh, in that attaches or bolts to the back of that, the diffuser assembly, which is the very first set of videos I made uh, regarding reassembly of the J44. So with this attached to it, it actually has nothing to do with the combustion chamber other than but so as you can see, it's a hollow pipe, so the shaft is rotating in here, and but there's a nice space of air all the way around, so that keeps the heat off of the shaft there. All right, you see the end of this has. We'll get a little closer. You know, the way the baffles are designed, this is the end that would uh, lead up to the turbine nozzle, then the turbine disc. Well, let's do it this way where you can see it. Uh, this is the back of the engine this direction, so the turbine nozzle, the disc, and then you have obviously the exhaust nozzle housing with that bearing and cover that you saw. So maybe this is, other than these cobwebs, see look how long I've been sitting, there's actually cobwebs. So that's terrible, right? Okay, so we're going to get, when we start, uh, as we assemble these, these will get a nice blast of air outside. Make sure there's no spiders or anything like that. So we'll set him aside. The combustion chamber, this um, is actually an annular combustion chamber, so we can see from the face to camera. There, the, This end is wide open, and this is the end that would, basically this fits to up over the edge of the, um, this flange fits up to the uh, turbine nozzle and as you can see this flange fits nicely with this piece I think what we have is something to this effect okay so we have lots of air going through and away from the shaft and it all directs through this ring, this this annulus. Okay? So now you can see how that works. How this would work. We could bang some of these pieces a little bit together. We're not gonna hurt them. They're really tough stainless steel. Okay, so there's the business end of the combustion chamber. I guess maybe we should rephrase that. 
I guess both ends are business ends. That would be the end that if you're standing behind it, it would be hot. This end is the air coming into the end, so it would be cooler to be standing at this end. These holes obviously are where our nozzles fit. And if we hold this up, this ring, it's, just, it's a fuel manifold, but it's basically a tubing bent in a complete circle. And then of course here at the bottom, this would be at the bottom of the engine, is an inlet. And this, the fuel can flow either direction and probably does. And we have 12 uh, fuel nozzles, which just spray a big heavy fog or mist or I guess at full power a very, very heavy fog of fuel. And these, or this assembly here, attaches to the combustion. <coughs> this attaches to the combustion chamber like this. Here we have these, there are spacer blocks that line up with holes in three locations and then we have these little straps that goes over the fuel line, the manifold, and two fasteners at each location here, here, and here. So as you can see there's not a lot to this. I will show you a video of me installing these nozzles and they're torqued with a torque wrench so that's really exciting. Okay, so you can, like I said, you know, repeating myself again, there's not a lot to it. Okay, so as you can see, you're in for an exciting couple more videos. So check back here in a second and we will have maybe something else to show you. Alright, uh, at this point we're going to install the um, fuel nozzles into the fuel manifold uh, ring, if you want to call it that, it looks like a ring. And we're going to have this tested. Um, at a facility that does um, injector repair, injector testing, and things like that. They have equipment that they can um, pressurize this with, a, with fuel very close to uh, kerosene or jet fuel. I believe they'll be using diesel fuel because that's basically what they would do. But that'll approximate, they can get pressures that will be what this engine uses in its uh, normal function so that we can see if there's any problem with a uh, nozzle any of the nozzles having a problem with an improper spray pattern uh, if all goes good and they work good then we'll use these nozzles but the only way to really test them is under pressure and then observe the spray pattern and uh, you can look at uh, agent Jay-Z has a video I believe on uh, nozzle testing and they actually have a a plexiglass or clear plastic acrylic enclosure and, and they actually pump fuel through them to the sea. Well, I don't have one of those. I really don't want to spend a bunch of time building a contraption to uh, pressure test. Uh, a buddy of mine uh, has a connection with um, a guy who owns a shop that re repairs injectors and as I said earlier uh, also can test them at different pressures so we'll uh, have it checked out by him instead of uh, trying to build my own test rig. Okay, so what we're going to do is install our 12 nozzles in this manifold and torque them to the proper specs according to the manual here. Uh, I've got our trusty uh, field maintenance manual and I've uh, got my reading glasses. I've got, got a nice little snap-on 3-inch drive uh, inch pound, pound inch, newton meter range uh, clicker torque wrench and we got a Craftsman 5 8 deep well six point socket so as not to round off the little corners. Here's the end that uh, actually sprays the fuel out the, of the nozzle. We have a fine mesh screen on this inlet side. This end screws into the manifold. Uh, I guess as a final uh, metal or particle trap, let's just say that. All right, so let's uh, install uh, nozzles. I'll reset this camera to a little better angle, maybe close up so we can see. Alright, well what we're going to do, all these parts have been cleaned, they're all meticulously cleaned, so basically 
We're going to thread all these in by hand, of course. Get them started, run them in. They spin in easily. There are no gaskets or seals here, so anybody wonders if I'm forgetting something. Um, I did double check on the manual and the, and the exploded view parts description, and there are no washers here. So evidently, this is precision enough of a fit that it doesn't leak to any appreciable degree. So we thread all these in with fingers till tight, and then we will uh, get our torque wrench out and then we'll snug them up. I guess it could really be coordinated here. Do two at once. Wow, this will be awesome. Look at that. All right, there, there they go. Now we'll install this here socket. Make sure it's in the tightening setting. And now we got to, let's see what he says here. Fuel manifold and nozzle assembly. Nozzle, comma, fuel. Minimum is of 125 pound inches and the maximum is of 150 pound inches. Well, that's kind of a range, isn't it? So what we, we will do is go in the middle. So what, 135, does that sound good? Give or take, double check, 125 to 150. So let's see, 137 and a half. So we just dial this up to, there's 130. There's 137. It's close enough, how about that? I don't really want to go to 150. I think I always was always taught to be in the middle of the range of specifications if you have a choice. So all right, we'll start with um, this one here at the bottom and work our way around clockwise. So I'm going to have to hold this. Okay. This one. Four. check make sure once again okay we got all 12 nozzles snugged up to middle range torque spec. Okay, we're going to go ahead and dial this down. Always store your torque wrenches set all the way down at the bottom end. Just proper care is good. These things cost a lot when you buy them and man you hate to break them. There anyway, okay. All right, there's a fuel manifold. Fuel nozzles installed. Okay, this is the fuel inlet fitting that uh, threads into the bottom of the in, into the fuel manifold and connects the cutoff fuel cutoff valve to the fuel manifold and therefore the nozzle. So this is uh, as you can see it's a 90 degree fitting. This end this end has the O-ring and fits into the fuel manifold, it threads in, and this is an AN fitting to which um, a flexible line connects and that goes to the fuel cutoff valve. So um, when you hit the fuel on switch, that valve opens and it allows fuel to flow into here, and then of course out here and into the manifold ring and out through the nozzles. When you hit, when you turn that switch off, fuel cutoff switch, when you Turn the switch off, the solenoid closes off fuel from the pump and the control and it allows, it opens a drain to back to the tank which will allow any fuel that's up 
in this ring and nozzle it can now drain down and go back this way and into the tank that's so you don't have a residual fire in the engine that helps cut down on that and basically this fuel inlet threads into the bottom I'm not and it you just snug it in and it because of the o-ring you get it near snug you can actually stop with this facing the, the angle or direction that you want you can tighten this until the point of where this angle the direction of this fitting is where it fits and lines up with the fuel line on the bottom of the engine uh, with the o-ring in place it is already sealing since it's threaded in it, the o-ring here will make a seal regardless of which angle this is facing uh, so snug is good enough on this this will conclude the combustion chamber and fuel nozzle assembly part video part one we will try to um, like I said keep this uh, short and sweet within two or three videos I think I can do it in, in two uh, if I can get all the material in the second video if not uh, I'll go ahead and do a third as not to make each video or any one particular video long longer than I don't know 18 minutes 17 minutes that's long enough okay so stay tuned on uh, my channel for the next video and that will be hopefully part two and also the conclusion of the uh, combustion chamber and fuel manifold and fuel nozzles assembly so then we will be going on to that um, all-important rotor assembly as I've uh, mentioned previously alright well uh, thanks for watching and we'll uh, see you on the next one thanks